following show is controversial and contains content you may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. 98 FM Dublin Talks. Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. It is a Monday morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm Adrian Kennedy and between now and midday today, this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks, the mid-morning talk and phone-in show for Dublin, by Dublin and about Dublin. Now, are you somebody who's been stuck in that vile traffic on the M50 this morning? It sounds like a nightmare. One of the advantages to getting into work nice and early in the morning is, and and not having to drive in the M50 to get into work is that, uh, well, I was here before any uh, traffic, but if you were stuck in it this morning, let us know how bad it was. There is nothing worse in this city than being stuck on that awful road when uh, the traffic is just not moving. It's happened to me many times. In fact, I'm sure it's happened to every single one of us at some stage or another. Uh, It was caused by an accident and... I don't know what happens to the road. It just seizes up. It just stops. Anyway, if you were stuck in that traffic uh, this morning, uh, let us know. You can call us on 6797981. And if it's safe to do so, you can text 0877989898. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. If you're somebody who's been stuck in that vile traffic on the M50 uh, this morning. Um, What else have we got on the programme today? We had a lady on the other day about something amazing. Santa Claus driving uh, the 29A bus. We have tracked him down. He will be on the show this morning. In a couple of minutes, I'll be talking to uh, one of Santa's helpers who's been driving a Dublin bus. Uh, Also, a pensioner from the inner city is robbed for Christmas money. We'll uh, find out... uh, how a community is pulled together um, uh, in just a second. Also, a little bit later on, it's the story that has shocked our city. The baby uh, found on a beach in Balbriggan on Friday morning. Uh, the Gardaí have named, <coughs> excuse me, this baby uh, Belle. And we're going to be uh, appealing to the, the mother, who we assume is a young mother. I don't know why everyone assumes that, but I think we can assume is probably a young mother who... Well, basically, if she happens to be listening, there is help. And I'm going to be talking to a lady who is offering direct help in a non-judgmental way, uh, who just wants to basically put her arms around you and give you give you some help. Uh, We'll talk about that in just a while. Um, We'll be hearing uh, from a listener who's dreading Christmas because of the strained relationship with her uh, stepdaughter. And much more besides between now and midday today. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. If you want to get in contact with us about anything that we're talking about or anything you'd like us to talk about, you can uh, send us an email to Dublin Talks at 98FM.com. Dublin Talks at 98FM.com. Uh, you can send us a private message through our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. First off, though, we have a story uh, for you that is both tragic and has a heartwarming ending. North um, Dublin, well, North Inner City uh, locals have come together to support a 92-year-old woman who was robbed days before Christmas. The 92-year-old from Summerhill took out €500 from the post office. Uh, Then she was followed home and robbed. 92 years of age. Dublin's Lord Mayor, uh, Neil Ring, joins me on the line. Uh, Neil, you know the, the woman involved here. Tell me what happened in this awful story. Yeah, um, well, I know, I know the lady in question. I know her all my life. And uh, she's a great friend of my mum's. And uh, like everyone in the area was shocked when they heard that. She'd gone over to the post office to pick up a few bob for Christmas. She took out the money. A couple of lads... Uh, were just saw her taking out the cash and uh, followed her home. She literally lives across the road from the post office. So they just followed her home and when she went in the house, they knocked on the door and then pushed her in and took the money. And um, like it was, it was just an appalling thing to happen. Now, luckily enough, on the on the the positives of it, she's out with her son. I went to school with one of her sons and. Uh, She's, she's doing well, she's still in shock. I mean, she's 92, as you say. Um, but uh, the guards have done a great job, like, getting CCTV and everything. So, I mean, they know who did it, basically. And uh, 
and hopefully they'll be taken off the streets. Uh, hopefully, indeed. And uh, Neil, I, I don't want the woman's full name, but what's her first name, just so that we can... You know what, Adrian? I was just thinking when I was coming on, he started to ask me her name. In, where, in the North Industry, you always knew someone as Mrs. Something. I actually don't know. The, I know the woman. I'm 60 next year. I know the woman since I was a kid. I just know her as Mrs. X. We just don't know her. I, I genuinely don't know her. Sorry, right, fair enough. It's like, it's all the actually, names it, it just shows you how things have changed. When I was a young fellow, I wouldn't have known anybody's first name either. Um, I, OK, so anyway, these scumbags robbed this 92-year-old woman of the money that she had just taken out of the post office. Um, but the community in the area have pulled together. Yeah, well, it, the great, the heartwarming part of it is, that, and as it, as I would have expected now, to be honest, Adrian, you know, I'm from 100 yards from where that lady lives. Um, Karen Fox, in this, there's a sparge uh, on Summerhill Parade right beside the post office, and Karen in there, again, a well-known and established and liked family in the area. Um, Karen is one of the managers in the shop, and literally she just decided we're going to do something here. She put a jar up on the, on the counter and said... Um, old lady robbed, everyone knew who it was and honestly the amount of money that was put in it, it was just phenomenal over the last few days um, to the extent that it does for what was taken and you know we'll then what we'll do with the, the additional funds but um, it, it, and what was even nicer as well, it wasn't only the local community agent which we would have expected but people were literally coming down Bollybuck Road in their cars stopping because they saw the story, stopping, jumping out, running in and putting in fivers and tenors into into the jar. So, I mean, it was the whole, it wasn't just the North Inner City community. As, as I said, that you, I would have expected to rally around, mm. but anyone passing by, people from outside the area were brilliant. It, it, and it's, it, it kind of saddens me in one way that, you know, places like Summerhill often get a bad reputation. That wouldn't happen in any other part or in many other parts of Dublin, that the community would pull together to uh, raise money like that for uh, for this woman. How is she now, by the way, Neil? Um, she's still a bit shook. She's staying at her sons, but uh, still a bit shook, as are a lot of the elderly people. Like yesterday... Um, there was the party in Crow Park that the guards and Crow Park run for the elderly in the area. There's about 650 at that. And to be honest, a lot of people were saying it to me, but I can't say the lady's name off because of oh, health and this uh, But, uh, you know, probably my own mum who lives quite close by, like, she was sort of thinking, you know, now do I go up to the post office and take out a few bob? It just, it just gives that seed of doubt and a bit of worry into, into people when they hear particularly elderly people when they hear things like this can happen. But again, as as you and it's great that you're emphasizing the positive I, I see you're emphasising the positive on the... On the I, think it's, I, I think it's very important well, to in this right. case. And that, Absolutely. And I, yeah, and I yeah. mean what I said uh, a moment ago, this would not happen in many other areas of Dublin that the community can pull together like this. It really is. It's quite admirable, I have to say. Um, just finally, Neil, are the guards any closer to finding out what tow rag actually attacked this woman? Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. No, um, I don't know if they've, if they've already been arrested or arrested at the moment, but I spoke to Sean Ward, and the chief superintendent in the area and they're confident that they've enough information on CCTV and a lot of people came forward who'd been in the post office and gave descriptions and if the lady herself uh, was able to give a very good description and they showed her a photograph of someone and she she positively identified one of them so i mean it's it's um the investigation is going very well and in fairness to the guard and the community guards in the area have really just stepped up to the mark on this and to give reassurance to the elderly people in the area and yesterday as i said in crow park that they were going around and talking to people, you know, because there was a little bit of concern and mm. a bit of anxiety in the area. But, you know, the guards do come out and uh, give that reassurance that's needed. Because uh, no matter what what anybody thinks, uh, uh, no matter what the person's circumstances that robbed that woman, there is nothing can excuse robbing a 92-year-old woman. Nothing. Uh, absolutely not. You know, and my mum now is 80. 283 and you know you just you you, you just feel bad so, like the person that age and, and older can be they're they are vulnerable at that age of course and that someone takes advantage of that one it's just unacceptable as you say it doesn't matter what the circumstances are there's 
hopefully if, if those people have issues, they'll be addressed anyway, you know, whether mm. it was drink, drugs or whatever, but they're, it's inexcusable to, to take to, to, do, to do what they did. Finally, Neil, we, we got a couple of messages actually uh, from listeners asking, I would like to donate some money, how can I? Well, I'll drop into the Spar supermarket on Summerhill Parade and there's a little jar there and uh, full of, full of coins and notes and, uh, and that's what people are doing, as I said, people from outside the area just driving through in the morning are pulling up, not causing traffic jams, I can assure you, like the M58, and, but um, they are just stopping and rolling in a few bob and, and running back out, and that's mm. lovely to see as well. All right, very good. Spar and Summerhill Parade, if somebody wants to uh, walk in and uh, throw a few bob in there. Um, and, um, Lord Mayor, Neil Ring, thanks very much indeed for talking to us on that. Thank you, All right, there you go. So it's a sad story. It's a, a, a story that will make you angry. But a story with a, a, a nice end to it in that uh, the community has pulled together and um, collected money for that uh, woman. And hopefully that person, that tow rag, because I just, I, I feel ill when I hear of elderly people being attacked like that. It's just, there is no excuse. You're listening to 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. Now, um, another story that a lot of us have been talking about uh, over the weekend is another terribly sad story. Uh, and this is uh, the story of the uh, baby, the body of a baby found on uh, Bell Beach in Balbriggan uh, on Saturday morning. And Gardaí uh, today announced that they have named the baby girl, they've named it Bell. Uh, B-E-L-L-E and say the body had been on Bell's Beach near Balbriggan for a day or so. Uh, Gardaí are uh, reminding the the mother in this case that there is no criminal investigation and Gardaí are appealing to the mother of this baby to come forward, uh, that she may need medical intervention and uh, may need medical help. And there's probably a fear with this mother, the mother of uh, Baby Bell, uh, to come forward. And what the Gardaí are trying to do is to create a safe environment that she will know it's okay for her to either go to the Gardaí or to contact one of the maternity hospitals or contact Dublin Well Woman. And uh, I'm joined on the line by the uh, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Dublin Well Woman to explain what they can do uh, to help. Over the weekend, they uh, put up a, a tweet. And let me read just a, a tweet that Dublin Well Woman put up yesterday. If there's a teenage girl or young woman out there who's pregnant and hasn't been able to tell anyone, please don't feel you need to continue to keep it secret. And please don't feel that you're alone. You are not alone. You can talk with uh, one of our experienced counsellors about your feelings, about being pregnant. If you're afraid and don't know what to do next, um, we can support you by providing a space a safe space to talk through all of your uh, options. Alison Begas is the CEO of the uh, of Dublin Well Woman, and she joins me on the line. Alison, welcome to ninety eight FM. Such a sad story, but you are reaching out uh, to this mother. That's true. I mean, I suppose what struck us most over the weekend was the the infinite sadness of this of, of hearing that a young woman had been in that situation and had felt clearly that she had no one to turn to, could not go to a hospital or to a doctor and had delivered a baby on a beach and that the baby was discovered dead. So sadly, we cannot help the baby, but the woman is out there. Um, and we were just keenly aware she may need help. Uh, there may be medical issues that she needs support on, but also if she has felt so isolated, I'd like to think that we or somebody could be there to support her and try and help her work through what brought her to this. And we can only imagine the terrified situation that that uh, woman is in over the weekend. This story has been on all the news outlets, has been in newspapers. It must be uh, terrifying. But I know one of the things you're trying to get across is, as an organisation, uh, Dublin Well Woman won't in any way judge or condemn this woman. We don't. Our, our, our whole ethos is around upholding the decisions women make. We don't judge. We don't lecture. We don't try and persuade them towards one decision or another. So when a woman contacts us and wants to discuss a pregnancy, 
she comes in and she sits down with one of our professional counsellors. And by the way, this service is, is free of charge to the woman. And the counsellor will talk with her through her three options. So those would be, namely, does she want to continue with her pregnancy and be a mother? Is she interested in considering continuing with the pregnancy and then giving the baby for adoption? Or does she wish to end the pregnancy? Does, does she wish to terminate the pregnancy by seeking an abortion? Um, so we are there to listen to her, to challenge her, to support her. But ultimately, she, she, it, 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 the decision is hers to make. And we are there to give her that sort of calm, non-judgmental space to make that decision. So sometimes our counsellors will tell me that young women will come into them and they will visibly relax in our counselling room because it's the first time they've been able to tell someone that they are pregnant. So they come in having held this as a secret, not maybe told their partner, their family, maybe even not their best friend. And they're telling the counsellor because the counsellor is an objective professional. Now, thinking of uh, this, um, we assume it's a young woman. Um, It's a story that we hate to hear of in uh, 2018 Ireland. It reminds us of of the dark ages in this country. What would you say to that uh, young woman, should she happen to be listening right now? Well, if she's listening in the immediate, I would ask her how she's feeling physically. Um, I think the key concerns when a woman gives birth would always be has there been excessive or worrying blood loss and is there a risk of infection? So given that she gave birth in the last couple of days, I really would would ask her to come into one of our clinics or to go to one of the maternity hospitals to talk to them about her physical condition. She may need support there. If she wants to talk to one of our counsellors, I'd say please contact us. Uh, The service is confidential. It is free. We won't judge you and we will do our best to be there and to support you. Um, through and what and does, she, does she have anything to be afraid of, Alison? Absolutely nothing at all. We will not report her, neither will the maternity hospitals. Indeed, I've heard the Gardaí speaking this morning with great compassion and concern for this woman. That Their concern is not to investigate her or charge her or anything. Their key concern is that she's safe and that she's all right. So we really want to reach out to her If she wants to contact us, we will be there for her. Or otherwise, one of the maternity hospitals also will treat her with great compassion and absolute confidentiality. Okay, if she wanted to call, uh, who should she call? Uh, She can get details for our clinics on our website, which is wellwomancentre.ie. And we have three clinics in Dublin, one of which is on the north side. So if, if she's based north side, we have a clinic in Coolock, which may be able to support her. All right, and hopefully uh, that message will get out to her and uh, she will realise that there is somebody who will listen to her in a completely non-judgmental way and uh, give her all the help that she uh, needs. Um, Alison Begas, uh, Chief Executive of uh, Dublin Well Woman, thank you very much, Lee, for joining us on 98FM. Thank you, Adrian. And I know an awful lot of you have been really taken by that story over the weekend. I know I was, and... and I, all weekend, I haven't been able to get that uh, young woman out of my head. Whatever the circumstances were that led her uh, to give birth and leave the baby uh, where she did, I, I can't get her out of my head all weekend because she must be going through absolute hell um, over this weekend, especially as everywhere she turns, people are talking about it, people are... Uh, commenting on it, the Gardaí, um, ourselves, everybody. And as you just heard, there are people there who will help and the Gardaí can't stress this enough. There is no criminal investigation um, because it, it, it's understood the baby was born before, uh, sorry, had, had died before it was even born, uh, which is just so sad. Um, so... All we can do is appeal to uh, this mother to come forward and get help because she desperately uh, needs help. You're listening to 98FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. On the way after the break, I want to talk to you about a man that we've been searching for for the last couple of days. The news is we found him. Who am I talking about? You'll find out in just a second. 
98 FM's Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher for beds, flooring and more. 98 FM. If you were listening to this programme uh, last week on uh, Thursday, uh, we had a lady on the show who uh, was telling us about something that she witnessed on uh, Dublin bus uh, last Wednesday. Have a listen to this. This is from uh, last Thursday's show. I was greeted by Santa Claus when I went to pay my fare. Uh, the 29A in town. I, Santa Claus also had a uh, Christmas music blaring from the cab, did he? Yeah, it was so nice. It was a very nice thing first thing in the morning to get. Everyone was so happy after they paid their fares. You could see everyone. Well, I need to find uh, this Santa Claus. I need to find out um, where I can see him uh, driving the bus. I assume he's one of Santa's helpers. Oh, definitely. I doubt he's the real the real Santa. Yeah. Because he's very busy. He's busy out these days. <laughs> that was on our show last Thursday. And we put out the call for uh, Santa to, uh, f- to try and track down the um, bus driving Santa. And we have him on the line. Uh, Thomas Byrne, uh, Thomas, welcome to 98 FM. How are you? I'm great, Adrian. Thanks very much for taking me on the on the, the the phone show this morning. Known by many of your mates as Tosh. That's correct. Yes. Well, you're very welcome to the program. You, you just heard that lady was on our show on Thursday, and uh, she couldn't believe that Santa Claus was driving the bus. Uh, Santa Claus was playing um, Christmas music, and that's you. What's going on? How come you're driving a bus as Santa? That's correct. It was me there, and I'm delighted that she came on the phone show and uh, uh, got uh, got my name out there. First of all, uh, second of all, um, I started doing this about seven years ago, and uh, I've been do- I started doing it down in my local church there for the Christmas Eve mass at six o'clock, and then I just had this idea, you know, of uh, doing it on the bus and was seen as I'm a bus driver. And a lot of people were thinking, you know, are you mad? You know, dressed up as Santa Claus because it'd be very warm in the cab and everything else. But the suit I have is very good. Mm -hmm. So I went to Dublin Bus Management, who were absolutely fantastic about it. And they said, oh, this is, yeah, that's a good idea. So I went to them in uh, my depot in Clanturf. And um, they said, yeah, you know, go ahead and see how it goes. And it just took off from there. And um, it's been an absolutely fantastic experience doing it with, you know, seeing the passengers and especially the children getting on the bus and the smiles on their faces when they see Santa mm. Claus driving the bus is just amazing. I, I, I can only imagine, uh, because even, I mean, she sent uh, loads of 98 FM listeners uh, sent in uh, photographs to us and uh, loads sent in your name. So you're well known for doing this. You've been doing this for the last seven years. I have, yes. I've been doing it for the last seven years and, uh, you know, I, I, I just took it upon myself to do it and uh, it's taken off. It, uh, each year it gets busier. Like, people are putting up uh, posts on social media that they've seen uh, Santa Claus driving the bus on certain routes. And the only routes I do, unfortunately, are the ones that are out of Clantarf bus station. I don't do them out of Wood Garage, just that's mm. uh, where I walk from. And... Um, a couple of years ago there, I decided to, um, um, to add music to it. So I went to the management as well and asked them, could they do it? And they said, yes. Um, they just politely said, you know, just have it, you know, not loud music, just nice, soft, low-down music. So that's what I have. And, you know, it's nice and, you know, people listen to it and it's very soothing and uh, th- their journeys is made that much more pleasurable with the music and Santa Claus driving the bus. No, it really is. I have to say, um, uh, Thomas, uh, the reaction that we got from a load of our listeners uh, who've yeah. been in touch with us to say that they've seen you. So uh, you were spotted on the 29A the other day, but you, you're, uh, you're a kind of a floating driver, are you? That's correct. correct. Uh, what I'm, I'm known as what is uh, called a spare driver, which means I do every route out of the garage so I, I on a day to day basis I do different routes and what I do is I put up my posts on uh, my page on Facebook which is Dublin Bus Santa and I let people know what route I'll be driving the following day so that you know the message gets out there and that people can see what bus I'll be driving and the times and everything else so they can have the opportunity to get on the bus OK, so uh, on Facebook, Dublin Bus Santa, and yep. uh, you just go on there and uh, you, you reveal uh, what bus routes you're going to be on. That's correct, yes. I do that on a daily basis and um, uh, people can see, you know, what route will be on. And some people have gone on my bus and said, look, I've seen uh, your message up on Facebook, you know, that you'll be on this route today. So people are reading it and it is getting out there. 
Now, you're on a day off today, a well-deserved day off. Santa even needs a break. Um, yeah. When are you back working again? I'm back in in the morning. Um, I'll be on the 1.30 route tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning from 11 o'clock. So um, if anybody is listening there, uh, the amount of, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening, sorry. Uh, I'll be on the 130 route tomorrow from 11 o'clock, uh, which goes from uh, Castle Avenue in Clantarf into Middle Abbey Street. All right, very good. So the one uh, the 130 bus tomorrow from 11 a.m. Yes. And uh, then on the Facebook page, which is Dublin Santa, I'm looking at it here, you're very convincing Santa, I have to, I have to tell you. Um, well, you know, I, 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 I went out, I got, a, I got a fantastic suit, and, you know, as I said, if you're going to do something, you know, you have to look prepared, especially for as Santa Claus, because... You can't, uh, you can't uh, mess around with children. They, they know when they see, you know, uh, very convincing or real Santa Claus. Mm. All right. Well, look, it's a, it's a brilliant thing to do, Thomas. And like I said, the reaction that we've gotten from many of our listeners uh, just think it's a great thing that you do every year and have done for the last number of years. Uh, and once again, if anybody wants any information, um, you go to Dublin Bus Santa and even and, and, and Santa even says on, on the page, I'll be talking to Adrian Kennedy by phone from 98 FM uh, this Correct. morning. Yeah. Uh, and not sure if it's live or not. Well, it is live, uh, Thomas. Um, yeah. Look, well done. That's just a, it's, it's just a great... And you heard that caller that was on the show uh, last week, she was just delighted. And she, this wasn't a young kid, this is a woman on her way to work, but she was yeah. delighted to see uh, Santa on the bus the other day. So, uh, well done you and keep up the good work. Fair play to you, Thomas. I just, can I just say, uh, I just want to uh, thank everybody that gets on the bus and um, takes, their fo- takes the photographs and uh, wish everybody that travels on Dublin bus uh, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I hope to see them all on my bus at some stage. All right, fair play. Nice to talk to you, Thomas, and thanks very much indeed for taking our call. Thanks, Adrian. Take care. There you go. Thomas Byrne is his name. He is the uh, bus driver who drives the um, Dublin bus as one of Santa's helpers. And uh, you can see him on the 1.30 bus from 11 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. All right. And check out Dublin Bus Santa on uh, Facebook. In fact, I clicked like on his page there. So uh, Dublin Bus Santa on Facebook uh, if you want to find out what route he'll be on. I mean, it's very cool, really, isn't it? Now, next on the programme, um, we've all done it. Well, most of us have done it at one stage or another in our lives. Um, I have something for you next that we need your help with. We want you to remember back to when you did your leaving cert, if you did, in fact, do it. And I want you to rate how stressful it was for you. How stressful did you find the whole Leaving Cert experience? Uh, The build-up to it with all the study, the pressure from parents and yourself uh, to do well, and the actual exam itself. But the reason we're talking about this uh, is the pressure of the Leaving Cert is causing burnout among students. A new ESRI study today has uh, spoken to students, parents and teachers at more than 40 secondary schools and students who took part in the study said that the Leaving Cert crushed their creativity because exams rewarded those who could learn off and regurgitate things onto a page. In other words, uh, they are arguing that the Leaving Cert is desperately uh, stressful Lots of people think it should be gotten rid of. Or maybe you're somebody who did it and, you know, didn't find it a problem. I'd love to hear from you on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp uh, the programme 0877 98 98 98. I want you to text me right now how stressful your leaving cert was. Now, mine... By the time I got to the leaving cert, I couldn't have given a damn about school, to be quite honest. Um, But... uh, if I remember, yeah, it was stressful, but I just breezed through it and couldn't have been arsed, to be quite honest with you. I want you to text or WhatsApp us right now to 0877 98, 98, 98. How stressful was your leaving cert? One, if it wasn't stressful at all, and five, if it was extremely stressful. Okay, um, so text one to five to o eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight o eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. I'm looking for somebody who thinks it was the most stressful thing that they ever did in their entire lives. 
Maybe you are that person. If you are, I want to hear from you on 67979981. Because like I said, the uh, students who took part in the study said the Leaving Cert crushed their creativity because exams rewarded those who could learn off and regurgitate things onto um, a page. And I think for a lot of us, I, I, was, I found the Leaving Cert uh, difficult because I wasn't great at studying and I, I didn't enjoy it at all. Other people actually flew through uh, the Leaving Cert. So the Leaving Cert is causing stress And burnout among uh, pupils uh, is what this report uh, said. Students interviewed expressed frustration and concern about the squeeze on their time during the senior cycle when they were trying to complete homework, study, take part in uh, sport and do uh, part-time work. Others said it would crush their creativity, as I said. Many said they were forced to give up sport, while some complained of uh, sleep disruption and not having time to meet friends. Now, this is nothing new because it's always been the way. Alex, you're 17 um, and doing the Leaving Cert next June. I am, yes. Uh, welcome to 98 of them, Alex. Um, Thank you. How stressful is it? Um, <clears throat> well, since fifth year, I've really started to feel the pressure and a school I go to, they expect quite high grades. And I just feel the pressure coming on now, and I've got grinds lined up for Christmas and potentially Easter. So I'm really starting to feel the pressure already. And is this pressure from the school or from yourself or from parents or from all of the above? It's a bit of both. And now with society, you just have to, you know, you have to do a lot better than in the past. Is that what, you, is that what you've been told or is that what you believe? That's what I believe. And okay. I think that's what most people believe. So, uh, going into the Leaving Cert and in the next six months, have you a, a target in mind of what you want to achieve? I do, yeah. And hopefully I can go to the UK. But um, I just know it's going to be extremely difficult to get the grades I want. Are you setting your sights too high, then? Um, potentially, but that's what I think everyone should do. You still have a target goal, which is high, and then possibly an insurance. But by setting your sights so high, do you not leave yourself open to disappointment then? You could potentially, but that's why you have an insurance. Just so if you don't do as well as you want to, then you have something to fall back on. Right, okay. So how many uh, exams will you be doing? How many subjects are you taking? I'm doing eight. Eight, right, okay. And just to give me a ballpark, how many points are you aiming to get? Roughly around... For fifty five hundred. Okay, that's a fairly that's a tall order, all right. Um, and so far, do you think you have the ability to achieve that? I do. So I've received a few prognostications, and I should get around between there. So I should be okay. I should I should be ready. Right. Okay. And it, this report out today said that uh, the leaving students believe that the leaving cert had crushed their creativity, um, and it basically led to all sorts of problems, uh, having to give up sports, having to not mix with friends as much um, because you have to do homework, study, uh, part-time work and everything else. Have you found that happening to you? So far, not yet. Um, I've, you know, I've been, been doing this more sports. I've been going out into the rugby field. I've just been getting on with social life as well. Um, but I, during the weekends, I have been studying around four to five hours wow. um, before my exams. But that would normally just be on a Sunday afternoon. All right, well, look, then, Alex, I wish you the very best of luck next June. Uh, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Travis, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Travis? Yeah, not bad, man. How are you? Travis, you did the leaving back in 2003. Um, and, yeah. And you're saying it was very different back then. Why or how? Yeah, because nobody cared how stressful you were. You know what I mean? They'd pile the work on and pile the work on and pile the work on. And you just had to get it done. You couldn't. You couldn't sit and cry to your counsellor. You know oh, I mean? right, where, oh, where today, I, I, where today we're, we're now taking on board yeah. the stresses that people are... Um, in fact, this report yeah. today. So I'm more worried about the children's mental health than they are about the exams when, back in the day, they were more worried about the exams than anything else. Than anything else, yeah. But that's probably quite true, because, like I said... Um, 
this report out today uh, basically uh, is saying that you know students have to um, have all these things competing like homework, studying, taking part in sport, doing part time work. But that was always the way, wasn't it? That it's always been like that. You know what I mean? But all he did this, I don't want to call them snowflakes, but I think that's what they are. They just got oh, we've got too much to do now. You know what I mean? Just get it done. You yeah, I mean? and then, like it's this is nothing new. No, it's never been. It hasn't been anything new. The the, the curriculum hasn't changed. The, uh, the the subjects haven't changed. It's all still the same. You know what I mean? And I didn't. I didn't get uh, come sit down, talk to me. How are you feeling? And you know, I've just got piles of piles of piles of work to do. Mm. Which I I. I Okay, they, so the students now are saying uh, that it, it, many of them reach burnout before they even get to the exam. Oh, I'm sorry for them. <laughs> I reached it as well, but nobody cared. No. Uh, you how, know what I mean? How did you do in the in the exam, by the way? Uh, well enough. Well enough. Well enough. I'm, 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 I don't, I don't all right. I don't all right. I, ex- I ex- excelled my expectations. Okay, and 15 years later, what are you doing with yourself? Uh, well enough, again. That's vague, <laughs> vague enough, but yeah, okay, I'll yeah. take that. All right, well thanks, for, thanks very much indeed, Travis. 67979081 is our telephone number. Is he right that students today are just being complete snowflakes? It's always been like that. There's always been pressure. You get on with it. Call me right now on 67979081. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. And out of five, rate how stressful your leaving cert was. Um, so you text one if it wasn't stressful at all, or five if it was just off the scale stressful. We'll take a quick break. I'll take another couple of calls in a second. 98 FM Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher. The perfect present this Christmas. 98 FM. Oh, a lot of people uh, don't have any sympathy for leaving cert students if I'm to um, uh, read the, the texts uh, correctly that are coming in. Most of you are saying, snowflakes, get over yourselves. It's a bit of hard work. <laughs> no sympathy at all. Uh, this report today uh, showed that students interviewed expressed frustration and concern about the squeeze on their time during the senior cycle when they were trying to uh, complete homework study, take part in sport and do part-time work. Others said it had crushed their creativity because the exams reward uh, rote learning and suited those who could learn and regurgitate things on a page. And the reaction that we're getting is, uh, let me read this one. Boo-hoo! It's one year out of your life and you set yourself up a good chance of a degree if you get over yourself and do it. It's the silver spoon generation complaining once again. For the record, I studied my ass off for my leaving cert and got enough points to get into UCD science and now I'm doing my PhD. It's not that hard to set yourself up, says uh, that message. And then another one uh, on the same sort of uh, vain. God help those poor little tots. I wonder how they will handle a full-time job not being able to uh, do what they want to do. I did mine in 1992. I did quite well because there was no social media. Well, I don't know what social media has to do with the conversation, but uh, line one is Christy you're on 98FM. Christy, how are you? Yes, I'm amazed by this story. My sons and daughters tell me you can give up Irish, you can give up religion, you can give up history. Mm. I don't know how this generation is going to understand what being Irish at all is. Maybe it's something to do with the European Union or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, in if other words, was, the point you're, you're making is that um, the Leaving Cert today uh, is much easier than it was. Yeah, well, you have much more choice. You can use a calculator if you have one of my daughters and first you had dyslexia and they totally facilitate that. Now, when I did it in the 70s, uh, if you had dyslexia, you, you were usually beaten up, <laughs> you know, and they didn't even know what it was then, though. So uh, I, 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 can't, I can't believe this, you know. So you, uh, I, you obviously agree with many of the, the messages that this is like the mollycoddle generation who can't handle the pressure. 
I know I may be shocked for saying it, but I think that's spot on, you know. And also you have all the computers and, uh, you know, all the assistants. And research, too, you can do that. In my day, you had to go. I did honours history. I remember tra- uh, traipsing through, like, uh, a book one of the teachers wrote. It was about 800 pages of, you know, dense classical English. Nowadays, you know, you have the computers and all that. So I think... Uh, they don't complain too much. Mm. And the other thing I'd say, just overall, just to finish, would be, I think it's unfortunate that younger people aren't directed towards, and I did this with some of my kids, uh, towards apprenticeships, and not go, you know, crazy to get all these uh, points and all that, you know, because two of them have degrees, and they're less employable, to be honest with you, than the fellows with, uh, you know, electricians and carpenters. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So, so the point, you know, you know, trying to try to outdo everybody else for points is, I think, a terrible mistake and bad for the economy as well. And these fellows are paying my index-linked uh, <laughs> uh, pension, you know, so we want them to do well. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> I leave that happy Thanks for very much home. indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, wait. The Leaving Cert says this message wasn't as stressful as college is. If these kids can't get past the leaving without falling to uh, pieces... Oh, sorry, my... F- WhatsApp is just frozen, so I can't read the rest of that message. Uh, sorry. Very frustrating. Now, um, and that was a good message. It was basically saying, uh, if you can't get over the leaving search, you won't be able to get over um, a college. You won't be able to get through college. So just relax and get through it and whatever. You're listening to 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. A few months ago... We spoke about parental alienation on the show. Uh, This is where, in a breakup situation, children have their minds poisoned against another parent uh, by the ex. Well, over the weekend, a listener who wants to be known as uh, Sharon um, contacted us about her situation. And she's looking for advice, basically. She is dreading Christmas because of the relationship that she has with uh, her stepdaughter. She said last Christmas was a uh, disaster. Here's the background to um, Sharon's story. And by the way, we'd be disguising Sharon's voice just to protect her identity. And I think it's kind of obvious as to why we might need to do that. Um, Sharon um, is with her husband 17 years. They married six years ago. Her husband has a daughter with his previous partner. And Sharon is convinced that her husband's ex has poisoned their daughter's mind against her. And um, Sharon joins me on the line. Sharon, uh, we've disguised your voice so uh, so that you're not recognised. We've changed your name so that you're not recognised. Tell me uh, why you decided to contact us. Hello, oh, sorry, Sharon, I can't, I can't hear a word you're saying there. Hello, can you hear me now? If you're on speaker, you'll have to take it off. No, no. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go on, yep, yep. Hey. Um... Yeah, basically, it's just, it's, I feel like it's just gone out of hand. Um, we've had the whole, you know, her dad in the face work. And it's basically, she's just, she puts on the tears and says, basically, try to turn it around on me. And um, it's not that I've ever done that with the girl. I have treated her as one of my own. I buy her stuff. I take her away on holidays. I buy her clothes. I give her money. I drove her down to college. And I don't find I just I just get treated like an ant basically. And it's all Sorry, uh, uh, Sharon, I'm going to have to get the lads to ring you straight back because your the quality of your phone line, and I know we have it going through a voice disguise, is just really, really, really bad, uh, and it's impossible to understand the words you're saying, I'm afraid. Um, in just a moment, I want to take uh, a, a few calls on this conversation, which is about parental alienation and about how some adults choose to poison children's minds against another adult and that other adult can be their own parent or a step parent and it just makes life extremely difficult for everybody and there has been talk about this being made illegal um, about how there is a need to uh, make it illegal to stop one parent bad mouthing another parent or a step parent or whatever uh, and that's what I want to talk to you about. And I'd love to hear from you on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877 989898. So, Sharon, sorry, we have you back there. Is that, are you there? Yeah, I'm back. 
Yes. OK, that's a bit better, all right. Tell me, um, what, what, did you ever have a good relationship with uh, your husband's daughter? I actually did. Um, we were great together. Um, it really only started when she turned 18. Um, she was a totally different girl. She stopped coming up. She stopped um, texting her dad. Stopped basically all contact with us. Um, I booked a holiday last year. Um, it was just myself and the three kids. And she was one of the three. And for the whole holiday, she basically walked ahead of me um, with my friend that she had only met, that we went away on holiday with. Mm-hmm. Totally blanked me, um, sitting with a face on her, basically. So I was like, what is wrong? So she was after texting her dad saying that she wasn't happy that she wanted to go home. And I was like, well, oh, okay. Maybe she missed them, you know? So that was that. Um, the holiday didn't end too well. Um, again, no argument. And um, we got home, and it was a bit strange, basically. Last Christmas, she came up, and I answered the door to her. You know, she was coming in to stay, and she walked by me. No hello, nothing. So I went straight to her father, and the cards and presents to her dad, and said, Happy Christmas, Dad. And that was it. And I kind of, like, I was like, I wasn't even acknowledged, you know, in my own home. And... Again, you know, Christmas was very stressful. Um, I did bring it to my husband's attention, but he said he'd seen it himself. So he picked up on it. Um, and what has she said? Hello? Hello? Hello, how are you? What has she said? She basically, um, not an awful lot, not an awful lot. Um, I do think it's all down to the mother, though, um, because the mother is constantly tagging her, you know, negative stuff on Facebook about, you know, exes, her ex being with, basically, there was some sort of quote, um, that her ex with, uh, you know, I can't even remember the words of this quote, basically, um, I was getting her, you know, sloppy seconds. And, um, and, and, and just to clarify... You're with your husband 17 years. Yeah. And this crap has just started in the last year and a half. Yeah, you see, it's always been going on. Um, I was always the bad person. Um, She stopped us from bringing her away on holiday. She refused to get her passport renewed. She said, if you want to bring her away, you get the passport renewed and pay for it. We did. She'd send her up with no clothes, no suitcase. We'd have to go out and buy her the suitcase, buy her a load of clothes. We'd go on holiday, she'd spend her time texting her while she was away, where it was never, it was always, she was there in the background, even though we were in different countries, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, do me a favour, Sharon, and stay on the line there for one second, because I have to take a very quick break, but I'll come straight back to you after that break. Uh, I'd like to hear from you on this on 67979811. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. How do you cope with a situation like that? We'll find out the rest of her story straight after the break. Live and exclusive to Dublin's 98 FM, Monday through Friday between 10 and midday. This is Adrian Kennedy. You're with 98 FM's Dublin Talks. And Trish is here with Monday's top headlines. Thanks, Adrian. Garthy have named the baby girl found on a beach in Balbriggan as Belle. Her body was discovered on Saturday morning by a woman who was cleaning the area. No foul play was involved in the death of the newborn. Garthy are concerned for the well-being of the mother and have asked her to come forward. They're reassuring her that she's not in any trouble. Conor McGregor has arrived at the Dublin District Court where he's facing alleged motoring offences. The offences are alleged to have happened at Grove Road in Rathmines on the 10th of July this year. The MMA fighter arrived at court in the past half hour. Leaving cert pressures causing stress, burnout and mental health problems for students. A new ESRI study has spoken to students, parents and teachers at more than 40 secondary schools. It found that young people are lacking in life skills. And strong winds will affect Dublin from 7 this evening. Met Aaron has issued a yellow wind warning. Gusts of up to 100 kilometres an hour are expected until tomorrow morning. And I up to date on 98. Thanks very much indeed, Trish. This is Adrian. We're here till midday today and we're in the middle of a conversation with... Is uh, Sharon, who uh, is with her husband 17 years. They married six years ago. Her husband has a daughter with a previous partner. 
And ever since she turned 18, it's all changed. Um, Sharon, you were saying that you see there are posts on uh, social media and so on, some of which yeah. upset you to the point of crying. Yeah, every day. Like what? What's? Uh, give me an example of something that might have been posted. Well, um, I know I shouldn't really be taking social media into account. It's not important, but it's it's because of the way things have been. Well, it's making me, you know, think worse of it. Um, she can't be, you know, posting pictures of corn and mother. The mother's tagging the two of them together. And she sorry, Sharon. I'm I'm really sorry to have to cut across to you again. This is very frustrating. I don't know what's wrong with your phone, but it's really difficult to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it basically is, I know I shouldn't take social media serious at all, um, but it's just little things, you know, because of everything that's going on that's making me feel worse than I already feel. It's the fact that, you know, there's gay posts going up, you know, she's tagging her mother in posts, um, my best friend, no one will ever replace her. Um, you know, just stupid silly things like that. Find that the constant, constant gigs are just the way that things have been going on, you know, between the two of us. And it's gone to a point now. I just, like I've said it to my family, my family just told me to basically take a step back, you know, leave her. If that's, she's an adult now, if that's the mm. she wants to carry on and treat me, well then, you know, she's the one that's going to lose out because I've done literally everything I can do for the girl. Um, I've done everything. And, I was, and what makes you think it's your husband's ex that is poisoning this young woman now? Um, well, he said himself. Um, she has said, sent him text messages, you know, saying things about me. Um, I was a, a, diss, a Trump a commenting. Um, I was a yoke. Um, you know, she, she would be told that he'd run to his car sprogs quick enough. You know, just it's one thing after the other, like... And it's always, it gets draining because at the end of the day, like, I don't even know what to do. It's gone that awkward between us that Christmas time, like, it starts coming up. And then at dinner time, we sit at the table and she's constantly staring into my face while I'm eating. Like, it's just, it's just, it's a horrible, horrible situation to be in. And obviously and then, your, your, your husband is conflicted because this is his daughter. Um, yeah. But it, that's the thing he sees for himself what he is doing and to a certain extent there's only so much he can say to her because he's afraid that he'll lose a relationship with her at the same time mm. which is understandable um, but I have told him if she's going to be coming up to visit she's better start treating me with respect um, So he has you know, said that to her? He has, he has, he's had it out there And times. what answer does he get? And basically, she puts on the tears, and we're like, um, "How can we always take her side?" And you know what? I would totally understand if I was a bitch to the girl. I would understand exactly the reason why I'm treated this way. But I have genuinely, hand on heart, have done nothing to deserve the way I've been treated in the last three or four years. What's the worst thing that's happened in the in the last couple of years? Um, God. A few. Um, basically, one of the times that my my son, like my myself and my husband, have a son together, which is her stepbrother, um, whatever you call him, um, and basically she's telling him to shut up and get out of the room, and he he has special needs, and he basically was in tears over. He basically said, like, why is she treating me like this? So, like, it's that's not like. To me, it's a big thing. To other people, it might not be a big thing. You know, but now he's starting to lose out on his relationship with her because she's just carrying on the way she is, you know? And I'm having to constantly, you know, explain things to him, you know, where she's busy. She can't come up and visit you. She has her own things to be doing, you know? So I, I really don't know what to be saying to him either, you know? Mm. And Christmas Day, like I said, She'll come up, she'll take all the presents that we have bought her, and she'll be gone again, and you won't see her again for another six or eight months. Six or eight months? Yeah, yeah. And would your husband see her? No, no. Um, since she turned 18, basically, she hasn't bothered to come up. He hasn't seen her in about six months. 
And listening, I can, I can hear the strain that this is causing you. Oh, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Like, I know, I'm like, well, I've heard stories of people having, you know, strained relationships with their stepkids, but I never, ever dreamt that I'd be one of them in the middle of it. Because all. up until the time she turned 18, you had a great yeah. relationship with her. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's ever changed. We were very close. Very, very close when I think was poor. Now, I know for some families it's the exact opposite, that when the kids are younger, uh, it can be difficult, but when they get older, they grow up and uh, things improve. But for you, as soon as uh, this girl became uh, 18, it all went pear-shaped. And is it... You say that um, your husband's ex is an evil witch. Um, yes. you You firmly believe that once... The uh, the girl turned 18 that she said about poisoning her mind about you and uh, maybe to a lesser extent your husband? Well, no, I believe it's going on well before that um, because of certain things mentioned um, back to her father about things that were said um, that he was supposed to be doing. Um, so she was kind of making out that the father was in the wrong um, where she was the one that basically was with someone else. Um, I'm saying, you know, with someone else, and that's how the relationship broke up in the first place. And she basically told the daughter that it was the father that was caught down. Oh, she really? Oh, well, okay. right. Yeah. Okay. So she waited until she became an adult to uh, hit her with this information, which basically made your husband out to be the one responsible for their relationship yeah. having ended. Yeah. Yes. One hundred percent. Hence the complete change in the young one's attitude. Yeah, yeah, and I assume your your husband has had this out with her to say, no, that's actually not true. That is not the case. Yes, of course. Um, he would basically say, your mother told you that. Um, well, she's lying because it was actually already done it. But I don't really know if she would believe that. You know, I think she'd more so believe the mother now. You know, I don't think she believes that it it was. You know, she believes. I think she does believe that it was him who done it and not the mother. Um, which makes things bad for them as well. Like she wouldn't even so much as wish her father a happy birthday, you know. And things are like he does everything for her. He pays his maintenance. He, like I said, he takes her on holidays. Um, everything. Like if she was down the country and wanted to come up, or she was in Dublin and wanted to go down somewhere, with, you know, with the boyfriend, he'd gladly drive them. Wouldn't be a problem. Um, I just find that she just yields the for the last couple of years and now that she's old enough she has her own money now she's earning her own money so basically she doesn't need us now and it's good luck to I know, but but still, this is um, causing or could has the potential to cause a big rift between yourself and your husband, even though he has it has, it has right? Okay, it has many many other occasions. Yes. Let me read a message, and I don't know if this is in any way helpful. And if you've any advice for how uh, Sharon can deal with this uh, situation, and by the way, my apologies for the earlier uh, quality of the phone line. Uh, it was very difficult to understand uh, Sharon, uh, but these things happen um, unfortunately on live radio. But anyway, let me read out this message. Tell that woman to grow a set and don't take any crap from her. She's an adult now, so do what she's doing to you and ignore her. Don't take any more rubbish. Stand up to her and give her a taste of her own medicine. What do you say to that, Sharon? Is that helpful or is that something that's going to cause more of a wedge between yourself and your husband? Um, you know, there's, there's times that I have said I would say it. I would pull her up on it. And then I'm thinking to myself, would it make things worse? And then I'm saying to myself, how much worse can it get? So maybe I should, maybe I should, you know, pull her aside and because I've never, I've never approached her and asked her what her problem was. You know that way? I just close myself off. I'd be crying. My husband would be like, what's wrong with you? And I'd be like, um, just, you know, whatever happened, mm. what was said, the way I've been treated. And he says, right, I'll speak to her. So I've never, I've never actually approached her myself. Uh, maybe, as this message said, this one, this young woman now is an adult, and if she's making you feel uncomfortable in your own home, maybe it is time for you to say it to her that uh, I, I can't take this anymore. Yeah, yeah. 
Stay there for one second. I, I want to take in some um, some calls on this. Our telephone number is six seven nine seven ninety eight one. You can text or WhatsApp us zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Um, where am I going? Gina is on line one. Gina, you're on ninety eight FM. How are you? Hi. How are you? Now you're in a not dissimilar situation yourself. Something similar, basically. To make it really short, um, my husband's daughter came to live with us when she was eight years of age. At 17, she got interested in seeing her mom, and she couldn't really stop her. And she went off and seen her mom, and seen her mom in December, and by January, she was living with the mother. Okay, so, uh, was and uh, where was the mother in the interim, uh, between eight and 18? No contact, no birthdays, no cards, no nothing. Oh, so mom. she just disappeared for uh, nine they, years? Yeah, basically missed everything, disappeared for nine years. Her mom was into drugs. And her, obviously, the daughter, my stepdaughter always wanted to see her and wanted to figure things out for herself and figure out why things happened the way they happened. Which is reasonable, and, yeah. Yeah, and so she did it, and her mom promised her that she'd be good and she'd be a mom and she did that and the other. And, of course, she listened to the mom and moved in with her, and basically she turned her against all of us. Oh, right, OK. So, um, uh, has she now disappeared, your stepdaughter? No, we've recently started getting back in contact with her, but that's because she's not actually having contact with her mum at the moment. It took her a full year to figure out basically the type of person her mother is. And she figured it out. We have to leave her. We have to let her figure it out for herself. Okay, so after meeting the mother, she turned her back on um, you and her dad and uh, everybody else. Yeah. After a, a year, discovered that uh, once you're into drugs, you're always I- into it, and yeah. uh, she, uh, a leopard never changes his spots. Yeah. And did she get back in contact with you again? She tried to get back in contact. Uh, my stepdaughter. We, we we just she moved out. She didn't. She blocked us all. She changed her number. Everything. So nobody could actually contact her. We didn't even know where she was staying. The school didn't even know because she was still actually in school. She was doing her leaving cert. Um, but eventually we got in contact with her. But then we just started to get abusive messages. Like saying we were physically and mentally abusive to her. So I just said, no, I've got other kids. I can't do this right now. And my husband agreed that we just leave her and let her figure it out for herself. And she has figured it out. And it was only last week she turned around and said I made a big mistake. A big mistake. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that's something, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and do you see yourselves repairing the relationship? We're starting to now, yeah. And as well, <laughs> I have three kids and my youngest was heartbroken. He was only four and he is heartbroken because he remembers her being here all the time and all of a sudden she wasn't. Mm. And he was the one that said the others, you could explain it, said, but him, no, he was heartbroken. And he still is heartbroken about it. Okay, but... Things are turning a corner and yeah. uh, relationships are improving. Yes, now that she realises basically that the man wasn't all she met herself out to be mm. and everything she said wasn't exactly the way it was. And, you know, she said things about her dad, that her dad never wanted her and, you know, and, and it's, we were the ones looking after her, you know, that kind of way. So, you know, that we didn't care about her, we didn't want her there. I had my own kids, we didn't. She'd have a better life with her and she was going to be a mom. And then she realised... After, not long after moving in that the drugs was all the man was interested in she didn't care mm. so uh, anyway that's a, that's the upside that, that uh, this young one learned uh, the hard way or learned, yeah. for, her, learned yeah. for herself I suppose yeah. what, what her yeah. mother was, was really like you've been listening to uh, Sharon's story and Sharon is telling us about a, a stepdaughter who's completely changed since she turned 18 her whole attitude everything has changed towards Sharon in particular what advice would you give her? If I would just walk away from it. What, just tell her, and I know the dad can't, but just ignore and walk away. That's the best thing to do. That's what we have, we have to do. It's the only way you can get by it. And eventually, maybe she'll get older and cop on. And obviously, Sharon, that's something you would be hoping for, that she will get older and cop on. You there, Sharon? Hello? I said that, that's obviously something you'd be hoping for that you will grow up and cop on. Yeah, I wonder will it ever, you know, happen? You know, she is, you know, what I said, like she, she is an adult now, and I've been there for her since she was two years of age, you know. So I, I can't imagine things change. 
Um, let me read a, a couple of messages that have come in uh, about your story. God love this poor lady. Um, my advice would be sit down uh, with the husband and the daughter. Um, have someone who can help both sides and please stay strong. It's uh, very hard because uh, she's playing uh, both sides. And it is very difficult because you're kind of caught in between your husband who loves his daughter and uh, you being hurt on the other side. And yeah. do you think he's being supportive enough? Yeah, I, I think he is. But at the same time, um, you know, I, he doesn't want to be falling out with her at the same time. Um, that's understandable. I don't want him to. Um, I just want him some growth. You know, I'm not asking her to hurt fall over me and love me. Seems like, well, I'm exactly. I hope I hope she would, you know, treat me as a decent stepmother, you know, because I have been very good for her. Um, just a bit of respect. You know, that's all I'm asking. All right, but look, again, uh, Sharon, I, I don't know what's happening with the phone line. I don't know why the quality is so poor, but um, a lot of messages from people are basically saying that if, you know, you shouldn't have an uncomfortable Christmas in your own home, for starters. And if that's how uh, next Tuesday is going to make you feel, you need to uh, nip it in the bud and say, I'm, I'm not having this anymore. I can't take this anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I will have to do that. Definitely. All right, Sharon. Thanks very much indeed. Um, and a, a lot of messages coming in saying uh, something similar. Um, maybe she's been going through a really hard time. She's an adult now. Let her make her own decisions. Uh, I love my mam, but uh, she tried to micromanage my life, and I'm sick of it, says uh, that message. Um, I know she uh, loved me, but if she tries to control my life, I will freak out and push her away, says that message. Kind of not totally related to that, but anyway. Um, and I think that's the best advice we can give, is to is to stand up to her and... Tell her you can't take it anymore. All right, you're listening to 98 FM's Dublin Talks. This is Adrian Kennedy with you until midday today. Now I have a dilemma for you, and we are looking for your help. This is a message we got over the weekend as a result of uh, something that somebody witnessed. Have a, have a listen to this. It's fairly self-explanatory. It was sent to us on our Facebook page over the weekend, and it says, Guys, please don't give out my full uh, name or email. This has been eating away with me, uh, at me all weekend. On Friday night, I was out in a club for a work night out. One of my best friend's fiancés uh, happened to be there as well on his work party. Uh, he didn't see me, but I saw him. I saw him at the end of the night kissing a girl on the dance floor. The two of them were drunk and were kissing for about two minutes. I couldn't believe it. He is engaged to one of my best friends and they have two children together. One of his workmates saw it happening and dragged him away and into a taxi. What a scumbag to do this. Since Friday, I've been thinking about whether or not to tell her. I can't decide. By the way, I have a video of it happening on my phone, so he can't deny it. I don't care that he was drunk. This is bang out of order. Just call me Joanne. And I would love to hear from you on this on 6797981. The question is, what should Joanne do? Should she tell one of her best mates that her fiancé... Uh, was a cheat of the weekend, was kissing a girl for uh, two minutes on the dance floor in this particular uh, venue, which, by the way, was in North Dublin, just as a little, by the way, just to have him a little bit worried. <laughs> um, or should you just never get involved in someone else's relationship? Maybe you think she has a moral duty to tell her mate what happened. And as I said, it, it appears it was a drunken kiss at a work Christmas party some people would say, oh, these things happen. Mind your own business. Others believe that uh, they're engaged to be married. She needs to know what her fellow is up to uh, before she makes a commitment to actually go through and get married. I would love to hear from you on 67979881. You can text or WhatsApp us 0877 98 98 98. 98 FM Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher. The perfect present this Christmas. 98 FM. Okay, let me read out this message again from uh, a lady who calls herself Joanne, asks for us not to give out her email address or her full name. 
like we'd ever do that. But anyhow, uh, this has been eating away at me all weekend. On Friday night, I was out in a club for a work night out. One of my best friend's fiancé happened to be there as well for what looked like his work Christmas party. Uh, he didn't see me, but I saw him. I saw him at the end of the night kissing a girl on the dance floor. The two of them were drunk and were kissing for about uh, two minutes. I couldn't believe it. Uh, he's engaged to one of my best friends and they have uh, two children together. One of his workmates saw it happening and dragged him away and into a taxi. What a scumbag to do this. Since Friday, I've been thinking about whether to tell or not. I can't decide. By the way, I have a video of it happening on my phone so he can't deny it. I don't care if he was drunk. This is bang out of order. And that's from a lady called uh, Joanne. So I'd love to hear from you on 67979891. You can text or WhatsApp the programme 0877 98, 98, 98 Louise, you're on 98FM. Hi, Louise. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Louise. You did do this before. You told someone before. I did, yeah. I was the same kind of situation. I was out for a night out and, uh, yeah, I was seeing someone I knew and with someone else and... Uh, I ended up telling the, the friend and, yeah, backfired. It backfired? So, it backfired. Shoot the messenger. So what happened? Didn't believe it. Didn't believe it. And, and, uh, what can I say, you know? Right, so, so you told the other half uh, that their other half had been acting the maggots on a night yeah. out and were you not believed from the get-go? Like, um, it, 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 well, it kind of hits page, you know, but like other than that, it was just my ward against theirs, you know? Yeah, and uh, but when you told initially uh, to... Shock, yeah. Uh, it was shock and horror, you know, but at the end of the day, they were able to talk their ways over it, so what can you do? Like, each to all. And did you say that... Uh, what happened afterwards? Okay, so was it a him or, your, or a her that you told? It was a him. A him, right. So you told him that his uh, his girlfriend had been seen snogging somebody or whatever at a party. Doing the dirty, yep. Yeah, and uh, you told him. He was initially yep. shocked, but then uh, when he approached her about it, she obviously wormed her way out of it. Told oh, Jesus, yeah. Told a pack of lies. Pack of said, lies. You, said you were a big liar, and he believed her then. Yeah. And was he a good friend? No, he was all right there, you know. You sound like guy, like, you know, but... No, but I mean, but, uh, what I'm trying to work out here is, did you feel so annoyed about it because he was a good friend of yours before that? That's what I'm trying to understand. Why did you tell him? Because I, I, the way I look at it, if it was done to me, I would like to know. Okay, yeah, you know, fair enough. That's the way but, I was looking at it. But, but was, was, he, that... was he a close enough friend that you felt you had to tell him? It was close enough, yeah. I, I, I come around pretty much five, seven days a week, you know. Right, so, uh, yeah, so a good enough friend. And yeah, when he, when he know, eventually like, believed her pack of lies and uh, didn't believe what you, what you were telling him, uh, was that the end of that relationship then? Uh, did, are you no longer friends? No, we're no longer friends, no. So because you told him that she'd been kissing somebody, she came home, she said, no, that's not true, uh, he eventually believed her, now you're the one that was left without a friendship. Yeah. So you're sorry right, you did so, it? Um, put it this way, like, if you go to a situation and you dealt with it, you know, you, you, and you learned your lesson, you're not going to do it again. But if it happened again, no, it won't be done. Not a hope. Not a hope. Because, a of, hope. The way it because of the way it turned out. As you said, it's not even that, though. It's not even that, though. If, if, if you're with someone and you know them fairly well uh, for a certain period of time, surely you'd know what they're going to look at. So it's your own business to find out. Yeah, uh, it's oh, your own business, 100%. So, okay, so listening to what you're saying, it's the worst thing you ever did, you're sorry you ever did it, even though yep. you felt at the time he had a right to know, if it were to happen again in the future, you'd mind your own business. Yeah. Even if it was a very close friend. Even if it was a very close friend. Still one. Okay, stay there for one second. Uh, 6797 981 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program on 0877 989898. This is a dilemma that uh, 
a lot of us have faced at one stage or another throughout our lives where you know that somebody is up to no good. Do you tell or do you not tell? You've heard Louise's story. She did tell and it backfired. She ended up believing, or he ended up believing his girlfriend that she didn't do anything and that Louise was after making it all up and they, they ended up not being friends anymore. I'd love to hear from you. 67979081. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. Um, Claire, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Claire? How are you doing, guys? How are you? I'm good, thank you, Claire. Now, um, you believe that she shouldn't say anything particularly at this time of year. Yeah, I mean, there's two kids involved. If Anthony has said between now and Christmas, it's going to cause animosity, probably rows. I don't know how old the kids are, but their kids generally can pick up on bad vibes. We'll hear the rows. You know, it'll just put a damper over Christmas. What I would say to that girl, Joanne, is if she has video footage, I would approach the husband-to-be um, and basically give him a chance to come clean to his fiance. And if he can't do that, well, then... You know, it's it's she can make up her own mind whether she wants to step in. That way, it's coming from him, and she's not being the one in the middle like your previous caller and meddling and being the bad person. Mm. Yeah, you see, I, I mean, one of the first messages we got in a while ago was somebody saying, uh, "My God Almighty, this woman needs to get a life to even be videoing that. She should delete it straight away." Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just putting myself in that position. I've got three kids. Um, I know for a fact my husband would never do that. But if he did do that, um, was that the first time he did it? Was that the second or third time? You know, if the friend hadn't have pulled him off, where would he have ended up that night? You know? So, I mean, I'm sure she has a friend's email address. She can always, you know, make a new email address and send it to her via email. She won't know who it came from. So you're kind of saying she should tell... Um, but she should do it in a way that threatens him, uh, approach him with the video. Oh, I'd approach him with the video, yeah. I certainly wouldn't approach uh, approach a friend. I just don't think that's the right thing to do. Give him a chance to be upfront and honest. Have a chat with him. He might generally, like, he might not remember. He might say, I swear, I've never done that like this before. Had a couple of too many shots, blah, blah, blah. Don't even remember it. The mates told me the next day. I'm mortified. What am I going to do? It might be something that they can trash out together themselves and try and make this work. It might be a genuinely one-off thing that he's done and he's probably eating himself up over it. And may well, well, he'd certainly be eating himself up over it if he sees a video of it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'd say she should really approach him first. I wouldn't... I wouldn't go to our friends, especially this side of Christmas, no. Just try and let the kids have a good Christmas and then maybe in the new year he can sit down and talk to her about it and show her the video if he needed to. I don't know. I personally wouldn't want to see a video of my husband snogging somebody else. No, I'm sure you but wouldn't. I, I would. I certainly would want to know if, if he was unfaithful behind my back. And I know it's only a kiss, but we don't know if it's the first time it's happened. All right, stay there for one second, Claire. 67979081 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877989898. And I want you to text me as to what this woman should do. Um, send your text to 0877989898. Now, um, basically, party Friday night. Um, one of my best friend's fiancés happened to be there as well. He didn't see me, but I saw him. Um, anyway, he was uh, kissing a girl on the dance floor towards the end of the night. And uh, the two of them were very drunk, uh, were kissing for about two minutes. I couldn't believe it. He's engaged to one of my friends. One of his workmates saw it happening and dragged him away and into a taxi. And uh, she has a video of it as well. So she sees him kissing uh, this girl and she takes out her phone and she videos it and she has that video on her phone. And she basically wants to know whether she should tell. Now, you heard uh, Louise's story. She did tell. Uh, but she, it was the sorriest thing she ever did. If it ever happened again, she'd just mind her own business, turn her head and walk away. And maybe that's what um, this lady Joanne should have done. Turned her head and walked away. Um, Dermot, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Dermot? Good, Adrian. Yourself? I'm great, thanks, Dermot. What did you want to say on this? I think Joan should F off and mind her own business for a start. First and foremost. Why, um, it, why is it not any of her business? Do you know what? Everything about it seems like she has a vendetta against this fella. And I'll tell you why, right? She says towards the end of the night she's seen him kissing on the dance floor. She's yeah. out, the, out the phone, yeah? 
and she was video recording it. Correct. That was towards the end of the night. So she knew he was in the club. If she's our best friend's fiance who has two kids, for him, sure, at some stage she'll the night, but she not went over and say, ah, oh, hell yeah, how was it going? You know, introduce herself and funny fancy seeing you here. But she didn't do any of that. No, no but up. I don't know the circumstances. No, 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 just towards the end of the night. And she whipped out the phone. And now she has video evidence that he can't even deny it. So I'd say there's an awful lot more going on here to meet the eye. Oh, she set out to trap him, like? Not so much out to trap him. I'd say there's bad blood between her and him. From from something going back. But the fact that somebody whips a phone out of a pocket and says, and you can't even deny it. Do you know what I mean? That's a bit scary, that is. Obviously, I don't think he's done it before because his mates intervened, pulled him out, brought him out to a taxi. Yeah. Right? So I would say... That alone would, would say would, to me, as a man, that's how a character for him to be doing that. And his friends know the situation he's in, obviously. She's not being much of a mate to anybody, you know, that sort of way by turning around and even confronting him with the video. Oh, hey, by the way, you were locked out of your face and this is what you were doing. What are you going to do about it? It's not her circus, it's not her monkeys. She should ever mind her own business. Okay, um... So you believe that she should mind her own business and uh, she needs to question why she even has the video in the first place? Well, the f- yeah, like, like, that was towards the end of the night. She She's seen him, but he didn't see her. So there was a time lapse there as well where she could have introduced herself and said, oh, you're out tonight as well with the lads. Oh, yeah, happy Christmas. And like, looking forward to seeing it and stuff like that. I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened, but maybe like, it wouldn't have gone down that road. His friends are quick enough in to... When, obviously, when they copped it, they were quick enough in to pull them off. Mm. So I'd say it was... Uh, and in general, do you think people should mind their own business in situations like this? Look, look my, my belief is, like, for him, yeah, if, you, if he was a serial cheater, but it doesn't even look like he was... You know, it doesn't even sound like he was a serial cheater. The fact that his friends stepped in, like, if it was all the lads out together, and, you know, you know, out of the rip, sure, you know, strikes... Stag weekends, when you're away, what happens when you're out stays, stays with you and all that shit. It didn't happen here. It's made okay, yeah. shot. All right, so say, for example, with you, Dermot, I'm sure you have a couple of uh, really close mates, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And you're out for a night and you see one of your best mates' uh, wives snogging some fella on the dance floor. Are you just going to turn your head? And he's one of your best mates now. But it's only head. Yeah. No, but it would have been, like, like if the situation that she has would have been the same situation that I was in if I had seen her earlier on in the night. I'd have said, how are you getting on? How's it going? And okay. if she had gone in to snug the fat, I'd have said, oh, yeah, do you want to put in there and just talk her to the side? But okay, yeah, uh, uh, no, Don't okay. Face, All right, but you walk into a place between now and Christmas and you see your best mate, now your closest mate, his <laughs> wife is over in the corner <laughs> bet into some fella. Are yeah, you going to just turn around and walk away? No, it's still pull her to the sweat. But I wouldn't open my mouth. What do you mean you wouldn't open your mouth? I wouldn't open my mouth to him and say, here, listen, I've seen so and so. We'd just pull her aside and say, here, meet the sergeant, set us out. But I wouldn't, wouldn't go back to him and say, look, your missus is out doing this, that and the other. So you would mind your own business pretty much, well, except for... Own business, yeah. Like, how am I? I'm not blaming anybody to talk. Like, you know, that's not way. I'm not going to interfere. That's, that's his business. Whole business. And if she was locked out of her face, I'm not going to say drink is an excuse. But things happen. All right, stay there for a second, Dermot. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can uh, text or WhatsApp us. Oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Do you tell or do you not tell? Maybe you're somebody who did in the past, and like Louise, it backfired. Um, she was the messenger, and she got shot. Not literally now, but um, Nicole. I'm going to talk to you straight after the break about what happened with uh, your dad cheating on your mother. Uh, yeah, so... And how he, kept uh, a, how he kept a secret for years. Yeah, so my dad cheated on my mom and they had he had a, a little girl. And we, I didn't find out about it until I read a text message that someone had sent my phone three years after. Wow, okay. And I had a little sister. And stay there for one second, Nicole. We get that whole story straight after the break. 98 FM's Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher for beds, flooring and more. 98 FM. We're in the middle of a conversation about a bit of a dilemma that uh, Joanne is having and basically she's out on Friday night. She sees one of her best friend's fiancé, so this couple are engaged to be married and the fiancé is bet into somebody on the dance floor. They were kissing for about two minutes. 
I couldn't believe it, she says. He's engaged to one of my best friends and they've two children together. One of his workmates saw it happening and dragged him away and into a taxi. Uh, since Friday, I've been thinking about whether or not to tell her. I can't decide. By the way, I have a video of it happening on my phone, so he can't deny it. Um, I don't care that he was drunk. This is bang out of order. Just call me Joanne. Um, actually, a, a number of messages um, came, came in. Leave it alone. He was drunk. I wonder if many people accept that as an excuse. Leave it alone. He was drunk. Um, does that change your attitude, actually? When you hear a story like that, okay, he shouldn't be doing it, uh, blah, 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 but he was drunk. Uh, call me now on 67979811. Now, Nicole, so your dad was out one night, cheated on your mam, and as a result, you have um, a little sister that you only found out about three years later. Yeah, um, also, he was drunk, so I don't think that's an excuse um, that you can use. Like, you shouldn't get that drunk that you don't know what you're doing. Mm. Um, I know you but, shouldn't, but people do. People do, but it's still not an excuse. You, sh you should have your wits about you. Like, like imagine the hardship that that has all caused for for my mom, mainly, and for us. Like, So tell, my me, mom, what, tell me what it has done to the family. Oh, it's completely ripped us apart. Um, so when we were, so this happened a, a couple of years ago, I was in school at the time, I was just about to sit, I found out the Christmas, I uh, sit in my junior search and it just derailed me. Um, I didn't want to sit my exams, I wanted to drop out of school. Um, I fought to actually see my sister because that wasn't an option back then. Um, I now have a beautiful 11 year old sister that I, I adore. Um, um, but at the time, it was very messy. Like, we were afraid if I went to see my sister, would I betray my mom? Um, because her trust was broken with my dad. And did they split uh, up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they were, yeah, they split up. Um, but like that, like, people were afraid to tell my mom about the situation. Um, and I'm so glad... I'm so sorry, did. Nicole. You knew about the, the, the sister before your mother even knew? No, no. So I, I actually broke my phone before Christmas. So I borrowed my mom's old phone and I found a message that said, just to let you know, um, X, like my dad's name, has a three-week-old daughter. And I went to look at the, the date and it was dated for three years previous. Previously. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so you found so, an, an old text. Yeah, an old text. Um, but my mom obviously didn't know how to deal with the situation. She was obviously ashamed because of what my dad had done. Um, so she couldn't really bring it up. Okay, so but, like, but during that three years, had they had they split up? Yeah. Right. So, so my mum and dad split up like, like, straight away after that. Okay, um, and uh, but you, uh, what were you told as to why they split up? Just they split up? My, dad, my dad's drinking out of hand. Right, okay, that's what you were told. Yeah. Um, and... Three years later, accidentally, even though your mother knew this whole time, three years later, accidentally, you found out that uh, your dad had a, a little girl. Yeah, and I actually uh, approached my mom about it first, and she denied it. Right. So I pretended to be a babysitter in the local area to get all the information about my sister, and then I went back again, and I was like, why are you lying to me? And she obviously eventually said, okay, you're right. She turned around, she's like, I don't know what to say to you. You have to have a conversation with your dad. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Which I assume you have done. Oh, yeah. And, like, I've reached out to um, my sister's mom, and I have a good relationship with my sister now. At the end of the day, it's not her fault to what happened. She no, of didn't really not. have any control of it. So, um, and, and she's like, I'm so proud of her. She, she's doing great in school, and. I'm delighted that I, I, I know about her. I, like like I said to my I have a little brother as well. Well he's not little, he's nineteen, but uh he he says to me like there's something good in every bad situation. So obviously at the time it was it was awful, it was really difficult to go through. Um and I wish someone had turned around and said it from the get go because I missed out on her life. And the same situation with, with Joanne, like what happens if he goes on and has another child and no one told her from the start? Like, that's not fair. Okay, that's so, uh, yeah, to, to, to go back to that story, you believe 
that this woman has this information, she should tell um, his girlfriend, his fiance. I think she should approach his fiance and get him to tell her because it would be better coming from his mouth rather than her feeling embarrassed. Like I know if my dad told my mom, it would have been a lot easier than everyone else in the area going to my mom. She was like mortified. She's like, oh, why doesn't he love me enough? Mm. So I think I think he should tell her. I think like I think if he's any way of a man, he should tell her. But he needs to be basically blackmailed into telling her, does he? I don't think he needs to be blackmailed. I think he just needs a little bit of a nudge. Okay, but he's not the, he's not the one who's contacted us. It's the lady Joanne who's the one who's contacted us. She has to nudge him in the direction of telling her. Yeah. What if he says, like, what if he says, geez, I can't remember a thing. Next new thing I knew, I was in a taxi. Well, I'd show him the video. I'd be like, look, this is what you've done. Man up to it. As a matter of interest, how is, this is going back to your story, how is your mom about you having a relationship with um, your dad's daughter? My mom is such a strong woman. Like, she's still friends with my dad, for our sake. Right. And, like, that can't be easy on my mom. Like, my dad still comes for Christmas dinner because wow. he doesn't really have a family. Like, she's, she's an inspirational woman. But I know if I was in that situation, no way would my dad be coming to Christmas dinner. No yeah. way would I I'd be looking after him when he's sick. But, like... And does she mind you having a relationship with your sister? She was very awkward about it at the start. Um, and my brother actually refused to see my sister because he felt like he was betraying his like our mom mm -hmm. um, but we do see her now and like we don't really have much dealings with her mum but her mum is very good like she doesn't stop us from seeing her anymore um, so fair play like mm. fair play actually she never stopped us from seeing her so that's fantastic okay so some I got lucky so some good has come out of it uh, in that you've got a little sister but as regards this uh, lady Joanne she should approach him tell him what he did show him the video if necessary and say you go man up and tell her yeah 100%. and what if he says uh, no well then I'd nudge him a bit further say well if you don't tell her I will all right, stay there for one second. 67979891 is our telephone number. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. Joe, you're on Dublin's 98 FM. How are you, Joe? Not too bad, as in yourself. Good, not a bother, thanks, Joe. Tell me your story. Uh, it was a couple of years, a couple of years back there. I was up there with a friend of mine, his girlfriend, and another friend. And we had a few drinks or whatever. Got a bit arguing between the girlfriend and the boyfriend, and he went to bed. He said, I'm the friend's bed. Start getting throwy and stuff like that. And uh, we seen what was happening, so we left. And uh, I was up there a couple of weeks later, and she told me that my friend had raped her, but he didn't. But I knew he didn't. Mm. Wasn't that sort of bug? But I knew like, he hadn't got many morals, but I knew he wouldn't do that. So the event, he's told me that he just I says, Don't lie. And he says, Okay, well, we had sex or whatever. And I says, I rang me mate the next day, and I said, Listen, what happened between you and, and his board the night before? He wouldn't, wouldn't tell me or anything. So, I eventually got to a point that I said, listen, you tell him or I don't tell him. And I just, it didn't really end well. Like, it was more like chairs or strong sort of things, you know what I mean? Right. The best of voices, but I won't. Mate, let tell the fella to tell her. And that, uh, yeah. that's what a lot of uh, people have been saying. To, uh, approach him, tell him what he did. Yeah. Um, and even if he doesn't remember, tell him to man up and go yeah. and tell his yeah. girlfriend or his fiance. It, it, it's not just there's two kids involved, you know what I mean? Hmm. So they, but isn't, the, isn't that the big risk here, Joe? And you, you, you've you said it exactly as it is. There are two kids involved here. If he is to go and tell his fiance that I was uh, spotted kissing somebody on Friday night, is it, doesn't he risk that whole um, house of cards falling down? Whole relationship ended. It's worse if someone else says it, isn't it? But this is the point. Maybe this person should mind their own business. True, true. It, you know, bearing in mind, okay, so I'm not con in any way condoning what he did, but he was kissing a girl for two minutes on the dance floor, he was drunk, his mate dragged him out of the place and off they went. Is that worth destroying an entire relationship over? Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. It's a, it's a whammy, yeah. And in fact, Nicole, I'll put that same question to you. Is it worth destroying an entire relationship over? Well... It's better to destroy a relationship than to destroy a person. Like, children. Yeah, well, I was one of those children. 
I was one of those children and I would much rather my mom to find out when my dad started cheating rather than her to go through the pain of him actually going on and having a daughter with somebody else. And the embarrassment that it caused on my mom, like... Yeah. I would much rather that... Okay, but, but, but at this moment, Nicole, all this guy did was kiss a girl for two minutes on the dance floor. Well, that's all you know. Yeah, but he still did it. No, I know he still did it. Uh, but he probably didn't get her pregnant on the dance floor. I understand, but it was a start. Like, it, like if he gets away with this, what's going to stop him getting away with it the next time? And the next time? And the next time after that? It's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And fair play to his mate for pulling them away. Because imagine if he did pull them away. He could be in the same situation that I'm in. Oh, you have to bag and tag him. You would. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to do him. All right. So, uh, Joe, you think that she should approach him, tell him, uh, but not go directly to his fiance. Put, put it this way: if she, if she's good mates for her, right, and she's obviously knows him, tell her go up and say, "Listen, if you love your board as much as I love her, you'll be honest with her instead of making me ruin your life and your kids resenting you." You know, just put it out. Right? Just you know what I mean. I have to go. Have All right, good, good luck, Joe. Thanks very much indeed. And Nicole, thank you very much indeed. And, <laughs> and uh, will Christmas be an all right time in your house? Um, so what we do is we go over in the morning time and, and we see what Santi brought uh, my sister. And then we go back to my mom's house and we have Christmas dinner. So all the stress is gone, is it? Yeah. That's well, we're we'll trying our best. All right, that's great to hear. Um, fair play to you, Nicole, and and and, and fair play to you for for insisting on having a relationship with uh, your dad's daughter in the very difficult circumstances in which she was conceived and everything else. Uh, it's quite admirable, actually. Um, lovely to talk to you, Nicole. Thanks very much indeed. Um, let me read out one or two more of your messages. The sad thing is, uh, Joanne is not the only one to have seen it. She should pull him, tell him he, uh, what he did. And he was seen, and he should tell his fiance because she's bound to find out otherwise, says uh, Liz. It's not just all he did, Adrian. He should have thought about that before he did it. If he wants to be with other people, he shouldn't be with just one. End of uh, story. There's no arguing that point. The point is, um, it was, at this moment, his fiance knows nothing about it. Except for Joanne. And then one last, if a two-minute kiss destroys a relationship, then it wasn't that strong anyway. Oh, that's a debate for another day. Is a two-minute kiss enough to destroy uh, a relationship? Uh, this person says, no, it, 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 it shouldn't be. You should be able to um, build on, you should be able to work on it, basically. All relationships need to be worked on. And what this person says is, if a two-minute uh, kiss destroys a relationship, then it wasn't that strong anyway. I don't know how many relationships will survive something like that. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for all of your calls, comments, texts and opinions. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. If there's something you'd like to bring up on tomorrow's show, you can send us an email right now to dublintalks at 98fm.com dublintalks at 98fm.com You can send us a private message through our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Have a great Monday. I'll talk to you at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Barry Dunn is on the way and in the next hour He's got some great music lined up like these. I want you to rule my life, you to rule my life, you to rule my life. 98 FM Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher. The perfect present this Christmas. 98 FM.